محمد كما صلي تبارك على ابراهيم وال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وي كونتينيو اون وذ فقه البيوع ذا فقه اوف تريد اور بزنس اور كوماس اور فاينانس اور ماني in islamic what are the islamic guidelines in islamic law what are the islamic guidelines governing all of these things we are around halfway if not past half of what we're supposed to cover the rest which is remaining is quite simple stuff quite simple and then we'll get into the the um, contemporary issues the present day issues which face us the mortgages and the leases and uh, stocks and uh, commodity markets and uh, you know all of that stuff all of that stuff now if you have any questions before we start you might ask even though i believe there was a homework which you supposed to come with Or am I mistaken? Ah, there was not. That was last week. You sure? You sure? What we discussed last week? We discussed alijar, right? Rent. We discussed alijar, rent or hiring or leasing, which covers covers both renting items or renting services, right? You might rent an item, or you might rent a service from someone. Uh, and we discovered all of uh, we discovered what Islam says, and we discussed um, all of that, including the employee rights. I asked you to get. the exact place where the ontario um labor laws say that you have the right to worship right now you remember so there was homework i thought i was younger than most of you i thought it wasn't homework It was a question which was unanswered, so it ca- it uh, carry on. Yeah. It was a homework. What was the homework? Yes. I'm sure there was another one. That was week before. That was week before. Ahsant. Now you are remembering. What is the ruling of buying gold over the internet? That was your homework. You didn't do it, so it carries on. You did it. Okay, Bismillah. The taqabud is not yet and biadin. They said, when you say they, who are they? The one you looked at was who? Darul Iftah of Jordan. Okay. Aikum Salam. To take it. So they said it's haram. You can't buy gold over the internet because there's no yad and biyad as we say, hand to hand. Um, disposition that is why it's haram I, they say it, unless you have someone representing you on the other part of that transaction so if you're buying that gold from someone in Ottawa or from uh, Maryland United States whatever it is so you have someone representing you so you pay over the internet and then he gives your representative the gold then that is fine that is fine And that answers the Western Union question. So if I give the money here and my representative takes the money in, where was that um, neighborhood of yours again in Karachi? Oh, yeah, what is it called? Clifton, Karachi. Or oh, if I have my representative there who's my brother, then that becomes also same analogies. Okay. 
Who else did? Who else checked? Was there any other opinion you got, Muhammad? Where just Darul Ifta of Jordan? Explicitly, our question. I want to know more. Why did what did the 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 bigger um, bodies of fatwa say, like the Lajna to Daima uh, of uh, Saudi Arabia, or Darul Ifta al Misriya, the Darul Ifta of Misr of Egypt, or even better, the Majma al Fuqaha, uh, the the Fiqh Council. Majhal Fiqhiya Afwan, the Fiqh Council, which is through the World League, World Muslim League. Most of the scholars, they gather there and they give photos together of different madhahib. That would, that would be better if we can get from those guys. So that homework carries on. Now, okay, do we have any questions before we start? About business, not about things happening. Yes. Auto leasing later. I said all contemporary transactions. Contemporary meaning present day transactions, leasing and all of those things. It'll all come see when you know these rules, then you yourself can answer your questions. When you know these rules, you can answer your own questions. You understand that? And one rule we learned last week about leasing was what? The one, the leaser, if you want to call him that, the person who's leasing the item, it is his duty to do what? Or if it's a house, that the, the landlord, as they call him, is to deliver to you the object you're hiring or renting or leasing in a proper working condition and and if anything happens to that object it's his property he is responsible unless it's from your misuse if you're from your misuse then you fix it obviously you understand that is one of the main things which makes or deems the so-called lease agreements of today especially for cars haram because they say you are responsible for everything which is unfair it's not your property yes I'm responsible of changing the oil if it needs oil if it's the car and putting gas obviously you know and making sure it's running prop but the working condition of the car if something breaks down it was not my misuse huh? then it's your property just like the house if tomorrow you're if you're renting huh? And uh, let's say the, 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 the shower head falls off just like that. Or tomorrow there's no water running. You woke up and there's no water. Is that your problem? No, you first thing you'll call is the landlord, right? Like what happened? I pay you for this. Right or wrong? But if your child took the shower head like a monkey bar and he was hanging there trying to do some somersaults, then it broke. Then who's responsible now? Your child. Right or wrong? But it means you, obviously. Because <laughs> he doesn't have money, your child. You understand? It's two different things. That is one of the things. Anyway, we'll come to that later on. And you have to know, every contract, I always say this, everything comes back to the contract. What does the contract say? There's no one answer fits all. Is this mortgage halal? Sheikh, there is... I don't know, this company called Ijar and this company called, I don't know, Red Watt and this company called Islamic Mortgage and this company called Halal Mortgage and this company called Kosha Mortgage and it doesn't matter what the name is called. What does the contract say? Is it Islamic or non-Islamic? That's what matters. Now, any other questions? Yes.
that is if that is maybe it's not there but that is one of the things we have it, it's part of the islamic rulings not everything in the is in the book if that is your question do i have to find it in the book no this book is called what al wajiz concise this is concise that's so you have to have a teacher to explain it to you the sheikh didn't put everything there otherwise it will be like any other book of fiqh three four five seven volumes which you'll run away from. This is the concise. Yes, Muhammad. Uh -huh. Not to practice a religion. We are talking about the Ontario's labor laws that you as an employee uh, are entitled to time of worship. As an employee, that will be part of the labor laws, if that's what they call them. We're not talking about the broader freedom of worship in Canada. No, that is none. That is none. No. They can say, yes, you're free to worship. We worship on your desk. Worship on your desk, you know. Take two minutes of work and worship. Pray to God and khalas. You understand? It's not like that. See, that's the, the, the thing. You don't have to prove legally. It's there already. Just find me the clause. Just find it. It's there already. It's there already. Uh -huh. But most people don't know how to prove it. So we are trying to make things easy. If they go in the interview and they say, you know, by the way, Ontario label, Ontario label or whatever, clause 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, it says, you know, I have the right to worship. So I hope you guys will respect that. Then, you know, things become easier. Yes. Yes, Daniel. Cancellation fees. The contract says one year. Contract says one year, and then you say after three months I want to cancel. So they say, okay, you have to pay us this fee. Is that allowed or not? That's your homework for today. I'll pile up the homework now, so we make sure we do it. I think one homework a week is not enough. Eh? That is homework number one. And that is very simple, obviously. It's very simple. Most of the fuqaha, they'll say, yes, it's allowed. It's allowed. Because so you're breaking the contract. You're breaking the contract. And they'll say that should be stipulated like how they do it they stipulate so if you want to run away from the contract you'll pay us this much just like the employee if he was hired somebody hired you to um, work on his garden for 12 hours if you want to break the contract after three hours he doesn't have to pay you for 12 hours does he no he pays you for the three hours mm -hmm. anyway yes What do you do with what? The t-shirt? You don't wear them. Is it your business or someone's business? Then you return them to, to the business owner. It's not allowed to sell. This is one of the things it's not allowed to sell. Well, it's not allowed. You can't donate it because it's not allowed not just for you. Well, you can use it in other ways. You can use it in other ways for cleaning. Yes, you can use it for cleaning. Or you can use it for the pillows which people sit on. That is allowed. And that's what Aisha did when the Prophet ﷺ came into the house one day and he saw Aisha had put a curtain which had... <coughs> 
pictures. And he said, what is this, Aisha? He said, take it down. Aisha says, we took it down and we made from it the wisad, which is the pillow. These are things people step on and they lean on. So the picture doesn't matter. It's not being glorified. Mm. On their products? Well, that is not yours, though. That is not yours. You're working for a company which has products which have pictures on it. Sheikh Amin Uthaymin, when he was asked about that, he said, this is almost impossible to avoid today. The cereal has had pictures. The car has pictures. The candy has pictures. You know, it's almost impossible to avoid. So if you work in a company like that, how could you avoid it? How? It's difficult, yeah. Let's keep that, uh, the questions to what we discuss. The general questions will come after. Yes. In what transaction? What is risk and reward? Okay. It's the same thing. You're just using different terms. Then it's not allowed. Those are just terms. Like we said, I just told you different terms. Kosher mortgage, halal mortgage, sahih mortgage, whatever mortgage you want to call it. You can call it whatever you want. We are talking about the facts. Is there an exchange of the gold, hand to hand? If there is, it's halal. If there's not, it doesn't matter what you call it. Of course, it is responsible for it until, you del until they deliver. Obvious, that's very obvious. That's how they do it. It will come after two weeks, that's where you get it, or a week, according to the delivery method you, you, cho you choose or you pick, right? Express, UPS, or normal. You understand? Why are they practically impossible? Well, but a check... A check is a guarantee of payment. We didn't discuss checks. We're not talking about checks. If it's not satisfied, if it's not, who can stop it? Who? The owner of the check. Okay. And are they going to deliver? What are you guys discussing? Is it gold? Is it rice? Is it wheat? What are you talking about? You're talking very generally, randomly. They'll never get sell you. Who sells gold for checks? They will only accept They'll never. Nobody does they that. A or a certified check, exactly. Or you do it through your debit card.
You can't exchange. You are not exchanging their labor service. You didn't ask them for their labor service. You came with your gold to buy other gold. Whether they're going to break it or dismantle it, that is their problem. And secondly, just to a point of what you, you, you mentioned, it is not necessarily that every time you exchange gold that it has to be impure. Maybe your gold is more pure than their gold. So what do you do in that case? They pay you. They never do that. Exactly. You see that? It doesn't mean... See, people have this idea whenever you go to the jewelry, you're the one who's inferior. They have the better gold. No. Maybe you have the more pure gold. You understand? And yours is worth more than what they have. So in that situation, even you don't exchange that for what they have because it's different values. You sell that to them, you take the money, and you give them... The want the one they the amount they want for that whatever you want to buy. Mm. Yes. Share cropping, yes. The share cropping you give zakah after you harvest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَآتُ حَقَّهُ يَوْمَ حَسَادِهِ And give us right the day you harvest. You give the right of Allah first. You harvested the total one. You give the right of Allah zakah. وَآتُ حَقَّهُ يَوْمَ حَسَادِ And then you guys divide. And even if you divide and then each of you gave accordingly, that's also fine. But always better uh, and I think most of the fuqah will say it's a must once you, before you divide. Because profit will come after you sell, right? The money. Or unless you're dividing the actual grain or produce. You give the zakah, the right of Allah comes before the right of you, the people first. You understand? You give the zakah and then you divide. The crop, it depends, right? Zakah of crops, we know it's different. It's either one fifth or one tenth, meaning either twenty percent or ten percent. What is the difference? How you know? Zakah, zakah. If it's irrigated, meaning you put your money in the irrigation system, if more than half of the produce is irrigated by you, you make canals and you put the sprinklers and whatever you understand more than half of the produce is irrigated by yourself there's an irrigation system then you give zakah as 10% because you spent money Allah made it low for you but if the produce of yours mostly uh, it is cultivated or irrigated naturally by rain or by a river which just flows into your crops uh, you don't do much then you give 20 percent now not the oil you don't there's no zaka is there zaka on olive oil it's on the olives not the olive oil The produce you get, that is where the zakah comes from. No. Is there zakah on honey? These are questions. After this, inshallah, we'll discuss zakah in detail, inshallah. All of these are questions which come. Is there zakah on honey? And things like those. Do you have any more questions on what we discussed last week? Yes. A certified check is different, Akhi. A certified check is 
a well-known method of payment and everyone has agreed to that you understand you go to any banking system that's why it's called the certified check it's not just any other personal check or any other check it is a form of payment a voucher is not does not signify anything it's just another voucher you understand it's just another voucher if I'm paying by debit I put my card then what is the difference of your question between that and that I can say also this is not an do you understand that okay and that that is why it is that is no it's not no it's not we just we're just talking about the exchange the exchange we're not talking about the value of the paper here the exchange has been made this check is in my name it's a certified check it is mine nobody can take it and I take the gold you understand the difference Meanwhile, I give you cash and you tell me pick up the gold another day. There's a big difference there. You understand? Now, any more questions on that? Yes, Akhi. No, no, let's, let's not get into that. Jazakallah khair, but I don't want to waste time on that, please. You know, we have a specific thing we want. Let's just get to that. We're not discussing the freedom of worship. Uh-huh. Well, you think going to an employer today, me or you, having an interview today can I say that to them and they'll say okay you can get to pray five times a day no would you think that will work that will work you think what about going with the actual clause from the tarot labor laws and says say this guys it says I have a right to worship so I hope you respect that hmm Sure, if you say it strengthens the case, why not? Why not? Any more questions? Good. That means you understood everything. Right? If there's no questions, it means you understood everything. Okay, today inshallah we start with partnerships. Asharika. And last, last thing we discussed, of course, last week was what are the things which are prohibited to hire or to rent and we said the the reciting of Quran the reciting of Quran this is not allowed it's not allowed for you to hire someone to come read Quran in your house this is a custom sadly most of us have you pay the muallim he comes with his five six students and they read Quran you make biryani for them they eat and you pay them and they go you think you've done something good in your house you didn't do anything and that transaction is haram. You're getting sins for that. It's not allowed to read Quran for money. Teaching is another thing. Teaching is another thing. Reading is another thing. Okay. Next, also, something which I mentioned before is al-hijama. Hijama. You know hijama. Cupping. Hijama. Is it allowed to take money for cupping? Not blood. You can't sell blood. We discussed that before, right? Is it allowed to pay the hajjam for his services? What does it mean not an exact amount? So he says to you, you know, hijama for me is $120. If you want to do the head and the back. If it's just the back, it's $50. That's his charges. Because we have brothers and sisters, they have that already. That's their charges. Is that halal or haram? Simple question. Yes, akhi. It's not haram. Why? You are very confusing. 
it is either halal or haram. You think it's not? Why? Well, the things he's using, you are bringing them. You are bringing the kit. Huh? No, I'm bringing everything which he's going to use. In that aspect, it's haram. What about his time? It's halal now. What does the hadith say? You sure? Don't worry about this. This is a class we have to discuss. Who says it's haram? Who agrees with the, with the brother? Why? Why? We discussed this the last time. That's why I'm bringing it up. Does the sheikh mention that? He didn't mention that. Yeah? It's one of those things we mention on top. Who says it's halal? To take money for hijab. Why? No, we don't talk. We, I just mentioned the actual scenario. This brother, he does hijab. And this, this is his charges. He, they are listed. It shouldn't be a business? Why? So it's halal, but it shouldn't be a business. Why? What does the Harid say? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Kasb al-Hajjam Khabith The earning of a Hajjam Person who does Hijjam Khabith You know what Khabith means right? Khabith means Vile Vile You know what vile means? Vile is close to evil Meaning dirty he says, Kasbul Hajjam Khabith. The earning of a Hajjam is Khabith. Now the question comes Does everything which is called Khabith in the Sharia haram? Is everything which is called Khabith haram? The answer is no. The answer is no. Not everything which is called Khabith is haram. Like what? Huh? What that? No, mention something which is called Khabith, but it's not haram. Hmm? I can't hear you. The khar is not mentioned in the Sharia. It is Khabith, it's haram though. It's not mentioned. I'm talking about. See, when you want to discuss the Sharia of Allah, there's always patterns, there's always principles. The question is this word which is used by the Prophet Sallallahu it says Khabith. Always you look for is there anything else the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi called Khabith? And that one which he talked about as Khabith, did he say also it is Najis? Did he say it is Haram? If that was the case, then this will be the case because they carry the same ruling. Everything is like that. You understand? You understand? There is two things the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called Khabith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says about those people who are coming to the masjid. If they eat two things, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called onion and garlic. He called them Khabithan, they're Khabith. Whoever eats of these two Khabith plants, he should not come to our masjid. He should not come to the masjid before you remove that order from your mouth. Right or wrong? All of you know that hadith, right? Onion and garlic. Does that mean onion and garlic are haram? Who says onion is haram? You'll have a fight with the Egyptians today. You'll have a fight with them, right? Not you, you are like Canadian Egyptian. Yeah. Who says garlic is haram? You'll have a fight with all of us. We don't eat without garlic. So even though they are called khabith, they are not haram. 
You understand? So the scholars said, yes, the kasbul hajjam, the earning of a hajjam is khabith. It does not mean it is haram. You understand me? This is how fiqh is dealt with. This is how you deal with fiqh. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he went to do hijama, he gave that person money after he did hijama. After he did hijama. So they said the meaning of khabith, it means it's not the best, obviously. So he shouldn't use that. He shouldn't use that to feed his family and himself. He should use that in his trivial matters. If he has another income source. But is it going to be haram to take it? The answer is no. And I'm changing my opinion. And I'm letting this be known to everyone. I used to say it's haram. Until I read last week. and it's So that's the beauty. You have to understand something. The teacher who prepares, he benefits more than the students. I have, I have to read and see what everybody says about this and that and that. I, don't even, I never knew this until last week. I always thought it was haram. I always used to take the opinion which says, asking for it is haram. But if someone just gives you as a gift, like you said, then that is okay. And that is how some of the scholars, they interpreted the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. That the person who did hijama to him did not ask beforehand, these are my services, these are my charges. He said, okay, I'll do hijama on you. And then you decided to give him a gift. Lakin, Allahu A'lam, it seems it is not haram, but it is makro. You understand that? That was something I wanted to, to, to raise. Now, before we go ahead, next question regarding that from the things which are allowed to hire or not. As someone, a raqi, raqi, someone who does ruqya, is it allowed for him to take money for ruqya? The scholars differ again. We have a fatwa from Egypt. Uh, not you exactly. We have a fatwa from Egypt which says, yes, it's allowed to take money. Another one from Egypt. Bismillah. Yes or no? Halal or haram? Which hadith? What does the hadith say, Muhammad? They asked before. And that is the hadith which proves it's halal to ask money for ruqya. The Sahaba, the hadith of Abu Sa'id in Sahih Muslim. They were traveling and they reached a place and they asked those people to take them as guests and they refused. They refused. And then so they set camp outside that city or the town. And then one of those people came saying, uh, Inna Sayyidana, our master or our chief, he has been beaten by a scorpion or a snake. Kad ludil. Kad ludil. Yani, he has been beaten by a scorpion or a snake. Afikum raqi, is there anyone of you who knows how to do treatment? So they said, Abu Sa'id, he said, they asked each other and they said, no. And then he said, I can do ruqya on you. He says, and my friends, they said to say, you don't know anything about treatment, you know, you're not a doctor. He said, no. But on the condition, you give us 40, was it sheep or, 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 or cows? Sheep. So he made a condition and they accepted and he went and this guy he got cured and they were surprised when they took those sheep they said oh we cannot divide until we take this matter to the prophet what you did was it halal or haram they went to the prophet and they said and the prophet asked abu sa'id what did you do he said i read on him al-fatiha seven times that's it and the prophet said what Ruqya, what made you know that it is a Ruqya? And he said, give me my portion. So the Prophet ﷺ took his portion. This shows what? It is halal, obviously. Leave them for the end. Asharika, we're discussing partnerships. Asharika, partnerships. 
What is the Islamic ruling of partnerships? And as usual, we always define everything the lexical, meaning the linguistic meaning, and then the Islamic meaning, Sharia. A Sharika hiya al ikhtilat. Wa Sharaan, in the Islamic law perspective, what is a Sharika partnership? Hiya ma yahduthu bil ikhtiyar bayna thnaini fa sa'idan min al ikhtilati li tahsil al ribh. Wa qad tahsulu bi ghayra qasdun kal irthi. Partnership, we are on page 484. A partnership is where two or more persons to, uh, they choose to combine together in order to obtain profit. Two or more. Could be three, four, five, a million people. You're all partners. You come together to do a business. That is a partnership. It can even occur without the intent of a person. Sometimes it occurs automatically. Like if your father or your mother or your wife, or your spouse, or your child passes away, in like inheritance. When they pass away, you and the fellow heirs, as they call him, you become partners automatically in that property. Islamically, this is the, the partnership. What is this legality Islamically? Is it allowed or not allowed? Halal, haram? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, about the story of Surah, uh, uh, about the story of Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. How does this story start? I was trying to remember. How does this story start? Uh, before, uh, إِذْ نَفَشَتْ فِيهِ غَنَمُ الْقَوْمِ Right? Before that was that the story with Sulaiman alayhi salam. إِنَّ هَذَا أَخْيَ لَهُ تِسْعُونَ وَتِسْعُونَ نَعْجَةً وَلِيَ نَعْجَةٌ وَاحِدًا Right? تِسْعُونَ وَتِسْعُونَ نَعْجَةً وَلِيَ نَعْجَةٌ وَاحِدًا وَقَالَ فَقَالَ قَالَ رُدُّوهَا عَلَيَّ Right? Huh? فقال اكفلنيها وعزني في الخطاب فقال لقد ظلمك بسؤال نعجتك إلى نعاج وإن كثيرا من الخلطاء لا يبغي بعضهم على بعض الله سبحانه وتعالى says mention to them the story of the two people who are arguing and they climbed over the wall of Prophet Dawood عليه السلام and he was amazed these guys just climbed over the wall they were not knocking on the door anything and they said, La taqaf, don't fear. Khasmani, we are two people are disputing. This brother of mine, I have, he has 99 na'ja. What is the na'ja? The sheep. He has 99 sheep and I have one sheep. And he convinced me with his words, you know, wrongfully. He said, give me that one sheep. What good is it for you? Wa'azzani fil khitab. That's what it means. He convinced me with, with words forcefully. That is what he said. When he had that, Prophet Dawood salam, right away he said what? لَقَدْ ظَلَمَكَ He has oppressed you then. That he asked your one sheep to take, uh, to take your one sheep into his 99. And then he said these words. وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْخُلَطَاءِ لَيَبْغِي بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ And many partners in business, many partners, they oppress one another. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَقَلِيلٌ مَّا هُمْ Except those who believed properly and do righteous deeds, and there are very few. This is a proof that partnerships are allowed. But of course, after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said what? وَظَنَّ دَاوُودُ أَنَّمَا فَتَنَّاهُ فَاسْتَغْفَرَ وَخَرَّ رَاكِعًا وَأَنَابُ and then Dawood, he realized, subhanallah, this is a test from Allah. And I have, mis I have done a mistake. What was the mistake he did? What is the next ayah? Ya yeah, Dawood, what is the next ayah? Inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ardi. 
فحكم بين الناس ولا تشتت الله said to me that would you made you a lead on the earth so judge properly between the people and this is a mistake 99% of people they do especially Muslims which is very sad you don't judge in a matter without listening to both sides you don't just because the husband he came to complain you say oh what an evil woman you have divorce her just because the wife came to complain you say a'udhu billah that brother is really sick we do the khul'a today no you have to listen to both of them especially these two things money that is business and marriage those two things akhi don't judge listen and then say okay let's listen to the other side of the story you understand that is how it's supposed to be but the point is they were partners next also Allah says وَإِنْ كَانَ رَجْلٌ يُورَثُ كَلَالَةً أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٌ وَلَهُ أَخٌ أَوْ أُخْتٌ فَلِكُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْهُمَ السُّدُسِ This ayah of course talks about the inheritance. If the man or woman whose inheritance is in question has left neither ascendants nor descendants but has left a brother or a sister, each one of the two gets a sixth. But if more than two, they, they are partners in a third. This is the kalala. Kalala is when someone passes away and he does not leave any ascendants or descendants meaning he does not have father or mother or grandfather grandfather uh, grandmother he doesn't have any ascendants and he didn't leave his own descendants no sons or grandsons or granddaughters or daughters he doesn't have a wife or she doesn't have a husband he doesn't have those people who are ashabul furud as they're called those people who have to inherit he doesn't have that but he has a brother or a sister or two Allah says they are partners for whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala another ayah says in surah Nisa, for whom shuraka'u they are partners they are partners so partnership simply yani, it is something which is allowed in Islam uh, and listen to the hadith of As-Sa'ib As-Sa'ib he says he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kunta shariki fil jahiliyya He's talking to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You used to be my partner in Jahiliya, the pre-Islamic days of ignorance. Uh, فَكُنْتَ خَيْرَ شَرِيكٍ And you were the best of all partners. كُنْتَ لَا تُدَارِينِ وَلَا تُمَارِينِ You are a partner who will never oppose me or argue with me. Is that the right translation, Muhammad? No. What is mudara? Mudara, it is a um, how you say it in English. Mudara is like you know this thing people are uh, 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 are tried with today. This sickness which many people are uh, have today. It's a sickness, you know, the sickness of sugar coating everything to everyone, sugar coating everything. Everything is, you know, you sugarcoat it like, I'm okay, yeah, 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 mashallah, brother, you're good. And then inside you're cursing him. Uh, no, no. Kunta la tudarin, you never used to have the mudara. Wala tumarin, you never used to argue with me. So the Prophet Sam used to be a businessman. He used to. Huh? Yes, he used to. He used to be a businessman. Dealing with Asaib, Asaib, and you see how people they used to remember him. Even before Islam, you are the best partner. You are the best partner. So all of these are proofs that it is allowed. Now Ashokani, the Sheikh he calls Ashokani here in Salul Jarrar. He says Islamic partnership comes into existence by the approval of two or more who agree that each will contribute a specific amount of wealth seeking by it some earnings and profit two people they come together to open a business as we say hoping to get profit because nobody opens a business hoping to to go into a loss two or more each 
will receive from the profits according to the percentage that he contributed. I put in 60% of the capital, so I'm supposed to get 60% of the profit. By the same proportion, they will also be responsible for the capital of the partnership, like we said. It is permissible for the partners to agree that each will receive the same percentage of profit even though the percentage of contributions differed. Even with one contributed a little and the other a lot. I put in 80% of the capital, you put in 20. But you say, you know what? Profit will be 50-50. Islamically, it's allowed. It's allowed. Because that is your choice. You understand? That is your choice. Just like in what? We already discussed some of the types of partnerships. Just like in Muzara'a and Musaqa, the sharecropping. Muzara'a, I have a piece of land, I give it to you, grow things there, and then we share the, the, the produce. We can decide 50-50. I give you the land, I give you the tools, maybe I give you the, the, the actual seeds to grow. You just do the work. 50-50, alhamdulillah. I can decide to give you more. You take 80, I take 20. Alhamdulillah. You understand? It is what you two agree on. But it has to be a percentage. And next he says, something of that nature is considered acceptable in Islamic law. A tread is based on mutual approval and being free to accept whatever is pleasing to the person. This is the general guidelines of a partnership. Next, the Sheikh will discuss one of this, uh, the types of partnerships, which is Mudaraba, which is Al Mudaraba. What is your question, Muhammad? You had a question? Yeah, just, uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to come later, but uh, the, 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 the board, like if we lose money, can it also be divided in a different percentage, or does it have to be. Like, the, the, the loss asking the loss how is it divided you also agree on the percentage everything has to be defined say I think you have learned that by now almost everything we're discussing the main important point is what everything has to be defined when things are defined there's less problems less problems like we discussed last week Akhi, come work for me for tomorrow come work for me all day I'll give you $25 Say, okay, and you go. What does come work for me mean? Like I said last week, you'll wash the dishes, you'll garden outside, eh? you will clean his car, you will change the oil for him, you'll change his daughter's diapers, you know, you'll clean the washroom, eh? you'll cook for him, you'll work on the roof maybe also. You said, come work for me, and you agree. There's nothing defined. And then you say, okay. You come to complain, Sheikh Allah, this brother, he prays and every day, and he oppressed me. He oppressed me, treated me like a slave. You agreed. You agreed, come work for me. What does come work for me mean? We said, no, that does not work. It has to be defined. Akhi, come work on my garden for tomorrow for two hours. Alhamdulillah. In those two hours, he calls, he says, Akhi, you know, change my tire, please. I have a flat tire. Say, no, no, no. You didn't employ me for that. You didn't hire me for that. You want that? We make a new contract now. You understand? Won't we solve a lot of problems because of that? A lot of problems will be solved. Or if it's something known in the urf, the custom. Maybe this person hired you before. Let's say he has a garage and you help him in moving the tires. Let's say. And you know when he says come work for me, that's the job you do. Then he doesn't have to define he doesn't have to define. But someone you don't know. You know like those people who take people into the Middle East. And it's sad that we have to give examples of Muslims who mistreat other Muslims. And non-Muslims. You know come there's a job in the Middle East. You know and this person he goes and he hopes you know you'll get this much. And he's out in the 45 degree sun outside doing construction work for 18 hours. And he says, you know, we were not told this. But it's too late now. It's not allowed Islamic. It's not Islam. 
that is not and then the time comes to pay you don't pay you don't pay right we discussed that we discussed the last week so it is very important everything has to be defined one of the partnerships is mudaraba al mudaraba al mudaraba its definition ma'khudh min al darb fi al ard it is taken from the word al darb fi al ard which is a safar li tijara allah uses this word in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa akharuna yadribuna fi al ard yabtaguna min fadlillah when allah was talking about the vases or the vase it is one of standing up at night to pray standing up at night to pray do you know that night prayer used to be a must tarawih if you want to call it or tahajjud or qiyamul layl it used to be for the must you have to wake up imagine what the sahaba went through then we complain it used to be a must and then allah he said okay this is now we'll take it away it's just voluntary how does the ayah start muhammad لا هذا في الانفال نعم ان ربك يعلم انك تقوم ادنى من ثلث الليل ونصفه وثلثه وطائفه من الذين من الذين معك والله يقدر الليل والنهار الله سيد الله knows you stand up to pray two thirds of the night our prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم or sometimes one third or sometimes one half of the night you and the believers with you and then allah says allah knows it is a bit difficult on you and then allah mentions maybe some of you will be sick maybe some of you want to sleep maybe some of you wa akharun yadribuna fil ard maybe some of you yadribuna fil ard they are walking in the earth yabtaguna ah min fadlillah seeking the bounties of allah they are traveling they went to dubai for business they went to guangzhou in china to buy produce they went to wherever that is darb fil ard you understand allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions this in what surah after a very important event what is the most important event weekly friday prayer after friday prayer allah says what when allah calls you for friday says what ya ayyuhan ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع when the call of friday is made go to the prayer of allah and leave everything leave bay leave tread no that is not the time you understand that is a time for allah after you finish prayer do others allah say ah فاذا قضيت الصلاة فانتشروا في الارض once the salah is done go into the earth spread seeking the bounties of allah that is why we say juma is not supposed to be a holiday it doesn't have to be a holiday meaning no work because allah says after you finish the prayer go seeking your bounties business trade or ever you understand and then allah says what وذكروا كثيرا لعلكم tuflihun and remember allah a lot do the zikr of allah a lot subhanallah alhamdulillah so that you'll become successful successful in what your prayers and your business and your business you understand so this is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put the earth for us allah says in surah tabarak surah al-mulk famshu fi manakibiha wa kulu min rizqi walk into the paths of the earth and eat from its risk so this is darb fil ard islamically it's halal for you to travel to china or to iceland or came here for canada to canada to do business alhamdulillah as long as you protect your religion you understand so because of this this is called darb fil ard now this part of that's that's where the name comes from al mudaraba is also called qiradan from the word qard what does qard mean loan why because mudaraba mudaraba it is what the creditor the creditor he provides a portion of his wealth 
for anyone to do business with and he receives a portion of the profit. We discussed about muzara'a. Muzara'a is when you give someone your piece of land to work on. You understand? Musaqa is when you give someone your trees to work on. Mudaraba is when you give someone capital. Akhi, this is $100,000. Go do business with it. And my portion will be 50%. Your portion is 50%. This is mudaraba. You understand? In English it's called silent partnership. Why is it silent? Because this other party, he does not give, any, he does not give even one cent. He just does the work. We'll continue after we pray Salat al-Isha insha'Allah. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik shana la ilaha ila anta astaghfirullah. Allah